The last time I got around to showing you the skincare bits I finished was back in October in my end of summer empties. The plan was actually to do it quarterly, like a seasonal thing, and here we are only six months later. Guess we missed the whole season, but I'm just going to use the pandemic as an excuse for that. That of course means that you need to sit through quite a huge bag of trash, but I promise I will try to keep it as short as possible and divide it into categories so you can skip the parts you aren't interested in. Most of the products mentioned already have a dedicated review up on this channel, so if the information provided is not enough for you, I will link a playlist with all my reviews up here for you to learn more. Hi, I'm Dr. Anne. I'm a medical doctor with a passion for skincare that works. On this channel, we explore the science behind skin and do quick reviews, so you learn to pick exactly those products that work for your individual skin concern. So if this is something you're interested in, please consider subscribing and ring the notification bell. The first category is already a non-existing one. I don't know how that happened, but I ended up not finishing any cleansers in the last six months. As I did keep washing my face, the only explanation here is that I have too many of them open at the same time, something I need to work on before they go off. Toners and mists. First, the usual disclaimer, no, this is not an essential step in anyone's routine. You can totally do without it. I personally do enjoy them, which is why I have finished quite a few. The first one being the Diaclair's Supple Preparation Unscented Toner. It contains humectants, Centella Asiatica and even a copper peptide, but given that this is a toner, probably not in high concentration. It is lovely in texture and hydration, but I prefer the Purito Centella Unscented Toner over this one, which is why I will not repurchase. One that I reached for more in the evenings is the Good Molecules Niacinamide Brightening Toner. The niacinamide, licorice root extract and arbutin in this one make it great if hyperpigmentation is your main concern, as it will support a routine trying to reduce it. And I think it has a lovely texture and is a great value for money, so I can see myself repurchase at some point. The Kix Thirsty Skin Hydrating Face Mist also contains niacinamide and is one that I picked up in Sweden. Really nice Nice, but nothing that I will go out of my way to repurchase. And the last one in this category is the Institutum Flawless Hydra Mist. Now this one has an amazing fine spritz and is hydrating and lightweight and absolute pleasure to use. It is however just a hydrating face mask at a pretty hefty price tag, so it won't get repurchased. Serum. Moving on to the next category, which is, as usual, the largest. What can I say? I do love serums, I tend to layer them, and as a woman in her 40s, I make sure to use them all the way down to my boobs. First, there are two firm favorites that repeatedly appear on here, both by The Ordinary. First, The Ordinary Buffer plus Copper Peptides, one of The Ordinary's more expensive items. For me, however, it is worth the price tag as it offers copper peptides as well as overall hydration, so it has already been repurchased. The next one is the Ordinary Niacinamide 10% plus Zinc 1%, a staple for summer when my skin still gets oily around the T-zone. The zinc helps with that and reduces inflammation, while niacinamide is just an all-round helpful ingredient. Has been repurchased numerous times. Then we have the By Wish Trend Pure Vitamin C 15% with ferulic acid, one of the many that were tested on my hunt for the perfect vitamin C serum. This one is really nice, not irritating at all, but started oxidizing a little more than two months after opening, which meant that for the last third of the bottle I was probably not getting the full benefits. This is actually common in vitamin C serums and should absolutely not put you off this one, but for me means that it is not the one. The search continues. From a recent sponsored video with a function of beauty skincare, I had this serum that I used up. The serum itself was really nice, but not $49 nice, if you get what I mean. Although I have to say that the packaging with this twist-up pipette is outstanding. 
Another hydrating serum that I admittedly use for its self-tanning capacities rather than the hydration is the Tanlux Super Glow Face Serum. Yes, pricey, but for me the perfect pick-me-up to prevent my more yellow complexion from looking too cyclish, which is why I already repurchased. Autumn is the season where I focus on undoing any pigmentation left over from the summer, so it is that surprising that I have two versions of the Good Molecules Discoloration Correcting Serum in here. The old and the new one. The main difference is that the bottle in the new one is dark and that Good Molecules reformulated using 2% tranexamic acid rather than the undisclosed percentage in the older version. It is hard to tell if that reformulation had any effect on the impact on my skin as pigmentation is incredibly hard to treat and requires a lot of patience, but as tranexamic acid should be used at 2% and the texture is lovely, I can see myself repurchasing this one in the future. Moisturizer. Another product with tranexamic acid is the Inkylist Tranexamic Acid Night Treatment. The texture is sitting somewhere between a thick serum or a light lotion. It also contains 2% and has a nice feel to it, but slightly smells like barbecue sauce. Depending on where you stand in terms of food, that can be seen as a good or a bad thing, but I admit it made me prefer the Good Molecules version. Then there is the Inkelis Ceramide Night Treatment, meant to repair your skin barrier. I really enjoyed this cream for summer. The Inkelis Q10 is similar, a hybrid between a rich serum and a lightweight lotion. It's a great option for people that don't get along with vitamin C due to skin sensitivities, but still want antioxidants. This is already my second bottle and I will eventually repurchase. Speaking of vitamin C, here is the Pixi Vitamin C Moisturizer, which actually contains three different kinds of vitamin C, the original L-ascorbic acid, as well as two derivatives. I liked it when it was a little bit colder, but I still wanted to focus on reducing hyperpigmentation, but to be honest, won't rush out to repurchase this one. And lastly, the cream to go with the before-mentioned face mist, the Institutum Flawless Hydrofusion Water Burst Cream. It has a lovely texture, I adore the light blue color, and the cream is beautiful for my combination skin in the warmer months, but not $65 beautiful. Nothing wrong with spending that much on a skincare product that you love, but I really love a moisturizer that much, so no repurchase. Face oil. I didn't finish any eye creams, they always seem to last forever despite being so small, but I did finish a face oil, something that doesn't happen too often either. This is the Pixi Overnight Retinol Oil, and I semi-cheated because I did not use it up on my face, but on my neck and decollete. For my face I use tretinoin, but everything south of my chin immediately reacts with dryness and irritation to that. I still want to get the retinal benefits there though, and this oil is strong enough to give some results, but not so strong I get irritation. And to be completely honest, neither the texture nor the scent of the oil makes me want to cover my face in it. I really don't enjoy many oils for that purpose. Sunscreen. Speaking of texture, let's move on to sunscreens, another category where the texture can be a deal breaker at last when you attempt to wear it daily. And sadly, the Purito Centella Unscented SPF 50 did live up to the texture claims, but not to the protection ones. So yes, I used it up. No, I will not repurchase. At least not until the promised reformulated version will be released. Same is true for another brand that I purchased and used up, but I'm not going to give you my thoughts about because they, opposed to Purito, did not handle the lack of protection in their product nearly as well. The Keep Cool Soothe Bamboo Sun Essence. 
Back when it was still warm enough to get my legs out, I also used up the Revidam SPF 50 Invisible Sun Oil Spray. Revidam isn't a brand that you hear much about online, but one that I have used quite often in the past already. It features a mixture of different organic sunscreens, both older ones like Ocrocrylene and Avobenzone, but also the newer generation like Uvinul A Plus and Tinozorb S, so I'm pretty sure you get amazing protection from it. I I think it is great for the body, providing protection as well as a lovely glow and hydration, but it is pricey if you plan on using it for the beach. I go through that amount in a little less than a week when I'm on holiday. For hair, I have my trusted Olaplex conditioner. I showed you the corresponding shampoo in the last empties. Somehow I finished my shampoo bottles much quicker than my conditioner ones. But both have since been repurchased as I trust them to keep my bleached tresses alive for years now. A new discovery I already repurchased is the Inkalist Hyaluronic Acid Hydrating Hair Treatment. I reviewed the majority of their hair and scalp treatments last summer, but this is the only one that really works for me, so I already repurchased. Then a random one, this is the Langha Mädchen Summer Hair Conditioner. Langha Mädchen is a German startup that sells exclusively at DM, a German drugstore, and I picked up the conditioner and shampoo on a whim almost two years ago. Lovely, affordable, but sadly this version was limited edition. I love the scent. Makeup. Sticking with DM, this is the Alverde Eyebrow Gel in Blonde. Alverde is an all-natural brand exclusive to DM and this eyebrow gel has been my favorite for more than 10 years now. For me, it rivals the way more expensive ones by Anastasia Beverly Hills and the likes that I have tried at a much better price point. So yes, already repurchased. As for mascaras, I have two. Mascara is one of the few things that I'm pretty strict with expiration dates. So six months equals two mascaras. The first one is the Maybelline Total Temptation one, which is okay, I think, but will not get repurchased. The second one is the L'Oreal Architect Falls Lashes in Waterproof. I turned to waterproof mascara for the winter when going by bike and wearing a face mask made it necessary. I never thought that would happen, but when I started breathing harder, my breath would go up, freeze on my lashes, and then when I got inside, would melt and smear down my face. Now that it isn't that cold anymore, I will go back to a non-waterproof version, though, as they are way easier to remove. Random. And lastly, two tubes of the Pro Relax Conductive gel that I use instead of the original new face gel with my new face device. And no, because that question will most certainly pop up in the comments, I have not made a video about microcurrent devices in general and the new face in particular, but I promise I will eventually. When I first purchased the new face, their gel was around four times that much, but they dropped the price recently, so it is around twice as much as the Pro Relax version. I might be going back to the original now, as this is the one they did the studies with, which could potentially influence the results. We will see. Whew, that was a lot of stuff. Congrats if you made it to the end. Please tell me if you have tried any of the items mentioned and how they did work for you in the comments below. I'm going to link to more videos on the screen now that I think you might enjoy, and I'm going to see you all very soon with another one. Bye!